Join me on the ultimate food tour in LA, home to the biggest Korea town outside of Korea. I'll share delicious eats, prices, and my honest reviews along the way. For my first dinner in LA, I went to Bubongli Sunday, a traditional Korean restaurant specializing in sundae or blood sausage. We arrived a little past 7 and planned to order sundae soup, but the staff said they had run out of the meat for it, so we ordered byodagi hejangguk pork backbone stew. After we placed our order, the staff brought us panchan or side dishes, which included onion with samjang, gakdugi, radish kimchi, garlic chives, and kotjori, fresh kimchi. There was a drawer in the table with napkins, spoons, and chopsticks just like in Korea. We were initially disappointed that we couldn't get the sundae soup, but that completely changed when the pork backbone stew arrived. The portion was generous and included plenty of meat and potatoes along with perilla leaves. The stew was rich and flavorful with a little heat from red chili paste. I really needed this hearty stew after a long day of traveling from Philly. The stew is made by simmering pork bones for a long time, making the meat very tender, which I loved. A bowl of rice comes with the stew, but we ended up ordering extra rice because there was so much stew and we were hungry. We also got refills for the side dishes. Remember, you can always ask for more side dishes in Korean restaurants, which is one of the best parts. The restaurant was very clean, the staff was friendly, and the food had authentic Korean flavors. 10 out of 10 for my first meal in LA. After the meal, we headed to the hotel to get some rest. Hotels can be really expensive in LA, but I was able to book a hotel for $90 per night, which is a great deal for the area through a new hotel booking site called Planet. All you need to do is create a free account through the link in my description below, and the rates are up to 40% cheaper than other booking sites, plus you can also follow other travelers to see their genuine reviews. It's really user-friendly, and this has become my go-to booking site, so I'll leave the link in the description below for anyone interested. Thank you, Planet, for sponsoring this video. This the trip was mostly about food, but I thought we should still do a little sightseeing. So we drove to Griffith Observatory this morning before heading to Koreatown for lunch. There were beautiful views of the city, and you can also see the Hollywood sign from a bit far away. It's free to enter the observatory, but there are exhibits for which you need to purchase tickets if you want to see them. We only did the free ones, but there were still plenty of interactive things to learn about the stars and more. It is a touristy place, but I think some tourist spots are popular for a reason and not all of them are bad. I thought it was really worth visiting and was glad I went. We were planning to go to Koreatown for lunch afterwards, so we didn't bring any food, but I thought it would be a nice place for our picnic too. Parking at the bottom of the hill is free, but to park close to the observatory, it costs $10 per hour. I just paid the $10 because I didn't want to walk up the hill, but there are cheaper options. After sightseeing, we headed straight to Koreatown for lunch. One of the Korean foods that's extremely hard to find an authentic version of outside of Korea is sundaegbuk. Sundae is blood sausage and kuk means soup, so it translates to blood sausage soup. My husband and I both ordered sundae soup and it was huge with plenty of various meat pieces and blood sausage. You can eat it as is, or if you want it a bit saltier, you can season it with seojot, fermented shrimp they give you. Like in most Korean restaurants, the soup comes with a bowl of rice and side dishes including gakdugi, cube radish kimchi, and green salad that pair really well with the soup and rice. This soup is something many Koreans love to eat the next morning after drinking as it helps cure hangovers quickly. I'm sometimes a little hesitant to order sundaegguk because it can be smelly due to the pork intestines, but it seemed like they prepared the ingredients very well here and the broth was very clean. As a Korean, this place tasted exactly like my hometown's blood sausage. Even my husband whose favorite food is sundaegguk and who has had this soup hundreds of times in Korea said it was good. They serve barley tea, just like you would get in some restaurants in Korea. The restaurant had an old school vibe from the 90s and I felt like I was in Korea. Parking can be a bit tight, but I managed to find a spot and the staff was really friendly and full of energy. After a satisfying lunch, we had some time to kill before dinner so we headed to Santa Monica Pier. The traffic was a bit heavy, but it was understandable since it was a long weekend with perfect weather. 
I was only able to find a parking spot a bit far away, but I didn't mind because I was really full and thought it would be nice to take a walk on the beautiful pier. When we got to the main area, it was pretty crowded but still very clean and well maintained with arcades and rides for all ages as well as plenty of places to eat and drink. We stopped by a bar slash restaurant and my husband enjoyed a glass of beer. I wished it was slightly less crowded but I still loved the lively energy and cool ocean breeze. We wanted to wait a bit longer before eating dinner so we checked out a rooftop bar in downtown LA. The vibe was lovely and we got a beer and some french fries. What? That's three numbers. The fries were really good, but the waiter was not very nice as he kept pressuring us to leave if we weren't going to order more food, even though the place was pretty much empty. So we left pretty quickly and drove to Koreatown for dinner. Myeongdong Gyoja is one of my favorite restaurants in Korea. It's one of the most famous spots for kalguksu, which is knife cut noodle soup, and I've been really missing those noodles. I saw MDK noodles on Google Maps, which seem to be similar, so that's where we went for dinner. We got the classic kalguksu, bibinguksu, and dumplings to share. The kalguksu's broth seemed to be made with chicken or beef and had minced meat and various vegetables like zucchini and carrots. Bibinguksu is a cold dish with fresh vegetables in a sweet, spicy, and tangy gochujang sauce. It had the perfect level of spiciness, at least for a Korean. Both the kalguksu and bibinguksu were good, but I thought the noodles were a bit overcooked. I personally prefer noodles that are a little chewier, but the portion was generous and it was still satisfying. My personal favorite from tonight's dinner was the dumplings. The wrapper was thin, just enough to hold the delicious and juicy pork filling. I thought they were just as good as the ones I had at the original Myeongdong Gyoja in Seoul. They serve two kinds of kimchi as side dishes. The red fresh kimchi is very spicy and garlicky, perfect for eating with kalguksu, but if you're not into spicy food, it might be a bit too much. I also love the pek kimchi, which is non-spicy white kimchi. It's very refreshing. Overall, I thought it's a great casual spot to get some noodles and dumplings. There's plenty of parking in the garage and it's $2 if you validate it at the restaurant after your meal. I wanted to check out the original farmer's market this morning because I saw the famous Korean golfer Park Seri shop there and eat there in one of the Korean shows and it looked really good. I love fruits and veggies and I found a store called Farm Boy inside the farmer's market where everything looks so fresh and organized. I got some cherries, watermelon, chocolate covered pretzels, and fresh juice to go. I didn't get any veggies, but I'd totally buy my produce here if I lived in LA. Plus the owner was Korean and really lovely. We also stopped by the deli and grill corner and got a breakfast burrito packed with ingredients and perfectly seasoned. We had it with freshly squeezed orange and watermelon juice from Farm Boy and the juice was so refreshing, I could tell it was made from 100% fresh fruit. After eating breakfast at the farmer's market, we strolled around the grove right next to it, which is a shopping mall with trendy stores and restaurants. I love the ambience here. It had a European vibe with fountains and cobblestone streets. I thought it was a great spot for both locals and tourists. It felt fancy and I enjoyed walking around and soaking in the vibe even though I wasn't there to do luxury shopping. Before heading to Koreatown for lunch, we made one more stop at Rodeo Drive Walk of Style in Beverly Hills, which is the iconic luxury shopping street. It has lots of luxury designer stores and super fancy cars. I thought it had a mix of European charm and Fifth Avenue in New York. I loved the vibe walking there, even though I knew I wasn't going to buy anything. Then we headed to Koreatown to eat Korean Chinese food, which is one of my favorites. We got a combo with jajangmyeon, jjampong, and shrimp kampungi. I felt like I was in Korea when the staff asked if I would like an apron as many restaurants in Korea provide aprons to avoid splashes on your shirt. I've been craving jajangmyeon black bean noodles so much and it was delicious here. Both the noodles for jajangmyeon and jjampong were chewy just how I like them. I heard they make their own noodles here. Kampung shrimp is sweet and sour shrimp, and while it was a little bready, I thought it was still good, especially with the sweet and sour dipping sauce. 
For the side dishes, they give you raw onion with chunjang, Korean black bean paste, and yellow pickled radish. Everything was good, but out of the three dishes today, I thought the jampong was the best. It had a really deep flavor broth and chewy noodles and tons of seafood. My husband and I eat a lot, so we finished everything, but I think the portions would be enough for three people if you order one of these combos. After a really filling lunch, we went to get one of my favorite Korean desserts, pingsu, which is shaved ice. This dessert place was packed, but we managed to find a seat after waiting around for 10 minutes. We got one green tea bingsu and one mango bingsu, and both were delicious. The texture was incredibly smooth and just melted in my mouth. I like that the snow itself was flavored rather than just having flavored toppings on top. I prefer the green tea flavor because it came with little rice cake pieces, while my husband preferred the mango flavor. Okay. This trip was mostly about Korean food, but we couldn't leave California without having In-N-Out, so we headed there next. We ordered two cheeseburgers and two fries and took a seat outside. The burger came with one beef patty, a slice of American cheese, lettuce, tomatoes, onions, and spread. The meat was tasty and juicy, and the buns were lightly toasted to perfection. Yes, there are better burgers out there, but for only $4 each, I was impressed. Few places offer the bang for your buck that In-N-Out offers. I know there are mixed reviews on the plain fries here, but I went with them anyway and I thought they were good. Simple and I was glad they weren't overly salty. They don't offer a wide range of dipping sauces, but I don't mind just having ketchup. Oh, I like this thickness. <laughs> Overall, I thought it was a great quality burger for that price point. Plus, the staff was really nice too. As we were driving back to the hotel, we came across a Mexican food truck that looked really local and good, so we stopped to check it out. Everyone was speaking Spanish and the owners didn't speak any English. They didn't even have menus, but we managed to order three tacos and a quesadilla by looking at what other people were ordering and pointing at things. They had a salsa station where you could serve yourself, so we topped our order with various salsas and veggies. The meat was smoky, juicy, and perfectly seasoned. Not only was the food delicious, but eating at a little plastic chair on the street was an experience for sure. Wow. The quesadilla was loaded with meat and melted cheese. It was really good. They didn't have menu with prices and weren't accepting cards, but I was able to pay via Zelle with a little help from one of the customers who translated for us. I was way too full after this, but I was still glad we stopped by and we ended the night eating the chocolate covered pretzels we got earlier. We started our day by eating the watermelon and cherries we got yesterday from the farmer's market and the fruit was so fresh and sweet. We also had the freshly squeezed apple juice and pineapple juice from the same place and they were just as refreshing as we expected. After breakfast, we headed to the Hollywood Walk of Fame. It was pretty cool to see the names of famous celebrities on the street, but the area wasn't very well maintained. It was smelly with lots of homeless people and people trying to sell stuff to tourists. There were some interesting shops on the street, but I think you can skip this place if you're short on time. We then headed to Koreatown Plaza, which has all kinds of stores from hair salons to banks to bakeries, plus a food court and a grocery store. I thought the best part was the food court. They have so many options. Dumplings, bibimbap, tonkatsu, you name it. We got spam kimbap and takpoki and they were delicious. The rice cakes were chewy with a spicy and sweet sauce and it was really good to dip the kimbap in that sauce. We also stopped by H Mart and picked up songpyeon, which are little rice cakes with honey and sesame seeds inside. Then I wanted to get some work done, aka edit my YouTube videos, so we went to a nearby cafe. I've been uploading YouTube shorts every day, so I really can't fall behind on editing. The cafe was packed, but they had a lot of seats with plugs, which was exactly what I was looking for. 
The decaf Americano I ordered was very good. For our final meal in LA, we went to a place I have been really looking forward to. All you can eat Korean barbecue for only $21.95. They first served us panchan, which are side dishes, and these included green salad, kimchi, japchae, cucumber salad, bean sprouts, rice cakes for wrapping, and potato salad. We started with chador prime beef brisket. The staff brought the meat quickly and you grill it yourself. I thought the brisket was tender, of good quality, and not overly fatty, which I liked. For dipping sauces, they offered one made with a mix of soy sauce, vinegar, and sugar, as well as sesame oil with salt. The beef brisket paired really well with both sauces. My favorite way to eat it was to dip it in the sauce, place it on top of the rice cake, and add kimchi for the perfect bite. After the brisket, we ordered purgogi, then marinated slices of beef. It was perfectly tender and marinated, my favorite meat of the day. We also tried pork belly, intestines, and shrimp. While pork belly is supposed to be fatty, I thought it was a bit too fatty. The intestines had a slight smell and I felt like they weren't cleaned properly so I wouldn't order them again. I did really enjoy the shrimp though, it was fresh and peeled. Plus all the side dishes here were great. We got a couple of rounds of refills on these side dishes. The grilled pan was getting burnt so the staff kindly replaced it with a clean one and brought our orders quickly whenever we order more meat. We had more beef brisket, shrimp, and prugogi which we enjoyed from our first round. We also ordered marinated boneless short ribs. I usually love short ribs but these pieces were a bit small and some were tough to choose so they weren't my favorite. Still, considering it was included in the price, I'm glad I tried it. I was getting really full but I still wanted to try everything on the menu so we ordered spicy chicken bulgogi. As a Korean, I didn't find it very spicy. It wasn't bad, but I still preferred the beef bulgogi. The chicken was tender and juicy, so if you like chicken, you might enjoy it. We also had tenjang jjigae, soybean paste stew, one of my favorite stews to eat at Korean barbecue restaurants. The tenjang jjigae was good with tofu and potatoes inside and it was all included in the price. Overall, I like the simplified menu with some of my favorite meats and side dishes all at an extremely reasonable price. I'd totally come back here if I lived in LA. After eating a ton of meat, it was time to head to the airport. Our Korean food adventure didn't stop though. We ate the songpyeong we got earlier at H Mart while we were waiting for our flight and it was so good, chewy, and sweet. I love rice cake so much. It made the wait a little less boring. Thanks so much for following me on my trip to LA and don't forget to like and subscribe for my trip to Korea.